Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture one of responsive web design with ASP.NET 5 and MVC pattern and Bootstrap 5. We will proceed this course with using C Sharp programming language, Microsoft SQL Server. What you need for this course is Visual Studio Community Edition with installing C Sharp ASP.NET. You have to install them. Also, you need to install Microsoft SQL Developer Edition, Microsoft SQL Management Studio. If you install these, you will be able to follow the course as I progress. In this course, we will be using our GitHub repository that I have composed for this year's course, Responsive Web Design with ASP.NET 5 and MVC pattern. Here the URL. I will also put this URL into the description of video. Also, you can type Furkan Gozukara for GitHub from repository you can find the repository from there as well. Actually, we will be using ASP.NET Core. However, it is named as ASP.NET after certain update. We will be using version 5. So let's start with initializing our repository. The folder name okay, here. You see it is empty right now. I will initialize it. I have added our repository. Now I will synchronize my folder. Okay, now we have synchronized the folders for our course material here. Also, I will add git ignore file as well. Another folder that I will be using. Okay, let's name it as. Let's start. Start with composing a new project. Let's search for our project template. You see, there is ASP.NET Core Web Application and ASP.NET Web Application .NET Framework. They have named the .NET Core as .NET in C# -sharp VPF application as you can see here this is .NET Core and this is the older .NET framework however it appears that ASP.NET Core is still named as .NET Core therefore do not use ASP.NET Web Application use ASP.NET Core Web Application then we will select the MVC you see here it is showing there so this is the project template that we will be using for this course here let's give the project name lecture one okay you see now it is telling us to pick the version we will be using ASP.NET Core 5 latest version you see we can also pick framework type here .NET Core or .NET Framework if you wonder the difference between .NET Core and .NET Framework .NET Core can work on other platforms as well such as Linux and such so there is empty API web application web application model view controller and such let's continue with the tutorial I think it was composing empty one okay let's continue so let's start with what is MVC MVC, short for Model View Controller, is a software pattern originally developed in the 1970s when graphical user interfaces were in the very early phases of development. MVC strives to separate an application into three areas. Okay, so MVC is Model View Controller. It is a design pattern that can be applied to all object-oriented programming languages. So there are the model. Okay, so let's read the model. This is where data and business logic is stored. In a typical web application, this part of the application would represent e.g. a database table or any other object that your application should deal with. And then there is view. The view is the actual visual representation of your model. In a typical web application, this would be the page that shows your model to the user, whether it be a form for inputting the data or an output of the data or a combination of both. Obviously, a view doesn't have to show all parts of the model, and a model can have more than one view. And then the controller. The controller should handle all communication between your model and your view. In a typical web application, the methods of the controller are invoked by the user when a page is loaded or a button is clicked. The controller then updates the model, if necessary, and then returns a new view or action, but more about that later, if necessary. So we separate our design into three layers. The model where we handle the data, such as we contact to the database, modify, update, select, insert, delete the data. Then we have the view where we show the data to the user. It is about graphical user interface. And then we have the controller where the communication between model and view is made. The user controls the, our application. So this can be applied to any programming languages that supports it. For example, if we give an example on Android mobile application development, you can use the same model 
in an Android application and in a web application because it is backgrounding. What would change is the view and the controller will change according to the platform you are developing. So this can make our job much much easier if you are developing multi-platform applications. Also, this is the future of the development philosophy, maybe we can call as that. So MVC is the model and design approach that you should follow in your professional life. So the rise of the MVC is... After being introduced in the 1970s, the MVC pattern didn't get much attention for the next 30 years. Early web languages like Perl, PHP and ASP Classic didn't really focus on design patterns and even with the release of ASP.NET, MVC was still not an integrated part of it. Sure, you could apply MVC techniques to your projects, but none of the popular frameworks encouraged it in any way. Then, in 2004, the Ruby on Rails framework was released, which was a web development framework based on the Ruby language with heavy inspiration from the MVC pattern. A lot of people believe that this put the focus back on MVC and shortly thereafter, many PHP frameworks, centered around the MVC pattern, was released. All of this made the MVC pattern hugely popular, which is probably why Microsoft decided to do an implementation of it for their .NET framework, including massive tool support in their Visual Studio IDE. ASP.NET MVC was released in 2007, but the first final version didn't see the light of day before 2009. In the next chapters, we will look deeper into what ASP.NET MVC is all about and how it compares to the alternatives, mainly ASP.NET web forms. Okay, to be frank, I have developed my applications uh, so far in ASP.NET web forms because I didn't have the enough technical knowledge and experience when I first started my web-based applications, web-based games actually. However, I am so much regretting that I didn't use the MVC pattern in my development because if I had used it, I could also make another platform application for my web-based games with a very little amount of work. So what is ASP.NET MVC? We previously talked about MVC in general, but in this chapter, we will be focusing on using the MVC pattern for building ASP.NET MVC web applications. Microsoft introduced ASP.NET MVC in 2007, with the first stable release being available in 2009. It's worth noting that the MVC implementation is actually open source. Microsoft has released the entire MVC framework under the Apache License 2.0, which allows you to view and modify the framework and even redistribute your changes. So you see it is open source and open source means that it has a feature. Why? Because everyone can contribute. It will progress much faster than a closed source code application. I think it is better it to be an open source. So the ASP.NET MVC Weave Engine. ASP.NET MVC was originally constructed to use web forms, the original ASP.NET technology, as its views, but in later versions, it has been made possible to easily change the view engine used by ASP.NET MVC to use custom built engines, and Microsoft even developed one, called Razor, which was released together with ASP.NET MVC version 3 in 2011. Today, Razor is the most commonly used view engine, but besides web forms, several alternative engines have been developed by the community, like Braille, Njango, Sharp Tiles and many more. In this tutorial, we will focus on the Razor view engine because it's really good and easy to get started with. Yes, I would also say that the Razor engine is one of the best, so we will be using Razor engine, it is a good one. What is the core part? You see, we could use ASP.NET Framework or ASP.NET Core. So let's read about more information about Core. You have probably already noticed that this tutorial is called the ASP.NET MVC Core Tutorial, but why Core? The original .NET framework, along with ASP.NET components, was originally released as a closed source framework in 2002. Later on, Microsoft decided that they wanted to create an open source .NET framework with support for the major operating systems, Windows, OS X and Linux. They called this the .NET Core framework and it was released in 2016, followed by many rapid releases with lots of improvements. After the release of .NET Core, rise of C Sharp and .NET has dramatically increased. It has caused a hype in the development community. It has definitely given a life to the .NET programming languages. I think the Microsoft did the correct thing. 
Today, the .NET Core framework is just as stable as the original .NET framework and besides compatibility with more operating systems it also comes with much better performance and a faster release cycle, meaning that you will get access to bug fixes and new features faster than with the original .NET framework. So, unless you need legacy functionality found only in the original .NET framework, you should always go with the .NET Core version. This is so true because Basically, there is almost no differences between .NET Framework programming and .NET Core programming. Therefore, why not use the latest technology? Why not use the technology of the future? Okay, so... Summary now that you know a bit more about MVC and the .NET flavor of it, move on to the next article so we can discuss how ASP.NET MVC stack up to the original ASP.NET View Engine, ASP.NET Web Forms. Okay, let's continue. So ASP.NET MVC versus Web Forms. As I said, I have a great knowledge and experience on Web Forms because I have developed my license thesis with them. There are two games that I have been developing. For example, the major one is Monster MMORPG. This is a Web Forms based development ASP.NET. I have written probably over 1 million lines of code so far in 11 years, actually 12 years now almost. I have been developing since 2009, yes, you see correctly. I have great experience and knowledge in web forms, but I can say that the .NET Core MVC is much better, believe me. So you should always go with ASP.NET MVC and Razor Pages if you are going to develop a web application. I can say that this is the best programming language for now at the moment for developing web applications so the game has so many features you log in register and log in you can check them out if you want the first version of asp.net was released in 2002 with the web forms view engine being the only choice available later on to support stuff like mvc microsoft has extended asp.net to support multiple view engines but for many years if you were using asp.net you were also automatically using web forms Microsoft had a very commendable goal when they created web forms, they wanted to abstract as much of the gritty details of the HTTP protocol and the stateless nature of it away and make web development feel much more like developing a Windows application, which was already a pretty pleasant experience at the time. They did so by introducing the view state, which would make sure that the current state of any form was preserved during postbacks to the server and they did it with server controls, which encapsulated the rendering of HTML and CSS into an arbitrary control which you could customize using logical properties instead of being forced to mix HTML and CSS directly. They also introduced the event-driven model, already known to the Windows developers at that time, to allow the developer to respond to actual events, like a button being clicked or a checkbox being changed, instead of doing manual checks for this each time the page was loaded. This also meant that markup and code was separated, which in theory is a great thing. Okay, where web forms fail it? Web Forms was a fresh breath of air for many developers, and it likely also helped a lot of new developers, or developers only familiar with Windows application development, to learn building applications for the web. Unfortunately Microsoft didn't succeed in creating the perfect and flawless abstraction, because a number of problems quickly emerged. Some of them were fixed in later releases, while others were more fundamental to the way Web Forms worked and therefore harder to change. The web forms technology has been criticized mainly for the following things. Okay, view state makes pages heavier. This is so true. I will show you what does this mean in my web forms based application. So when we open the monster dex page, which has a lot of features, we can see the wave state of the page. Okay, when I open, uh, you see there is a div class asp.net hidden and inside here, you will see the weave state you see how many weave states there are there are 82 weave states all of this text is sent to the server get back each time you make a request to the server can you imagine how much overload it is adding to the application from network let me show you so let's say i want to filter by a name and when i click this now we will see the post okay here is the post and let's see what have been posted and what we did get so the form data you see we have posted all these weave states uh, here we have got all this as a response and inside the response i think we can see the weave state somewhere okay here at the button it is a very long weave state you see 
So this is the maybe the worst part of the ASP.NET web form. It increases your overload a lot. It slows down, of course, the application. Let's see the post data size and the response data size. Okay, so the content length is 47 kilobytes just for doing an action i am sending 47 kilobytes maybe we can see better from here post okay so you see the transfer it over network size is 80 kilobytes it is huge to just do an action this is the worst part of web forms by keeping track of every server control on the page in a view state string, which is sent back and forth between the server on each request, web forms pages got quite a bit heavier. If you were building a medium complex page, the resulting view state string could lead to an increase of several hundreds of kilobytes. This could lead to longer load times, especially on a mobile connection and with the increase of traffic from smartphones all over the world, this became a very real problem. Yes, this is a so true sentiment. Therefore, we should avoid web forms if possible. Server controls limits your control over HTML output. Server controls makes it easy for you to quickly create something useful, but you never get full control of the HTML which it renders. This can become a problem when you need to fine tune your work as well as if you experience browser compatibility problems. Yes, this may be a problem, but not that much. I think the worst problem is weave state. Also, when you depend on the ISP.NET Web Forms provided asynchronous events, you really increase the back and forth sent data. That is the another worst part. It is not lightweight as you are using AJAX with like jQuery or such or JavaScript itself. Web Forms is bad for automated testing. The Web Forms model was introduced before automated, unit testing became a big thing and when it did, it was easy to see that Web Forms was hard, if not impossible, to effectively unit test. This is also true because you don't separate layers, therefore it is harder to do automated testing. In the modern programming, testing is alone a profession. Companies are hiring testers uh, to test their applications between updates or before release. Where ASP.NET MVC is an improvement over web forms. Okay, let's read the advantages of ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET MVC removes a lot of the abstractions implemented by web forms. For instance, you usually generate all of the HTML yourself, instead of relying on server controls. There is also no longer any view state maintained for you, effectively eliminating that problem, but also rendering several of the server controls, like the grid view and the repeater, useless at the same time. The MVC model is perfect for automated unit testing because of the loose coupling between the different layers. So which technology should you choose? Of course, ASP.NET MVC Core. It's important to state that while web forms may seem like an outdated technology when reading the above, it's actually not at all. Web forms is still being actively developed by Microsoft and is still a possible choice when entering the world of web development with ASP.NET. Web Forms is especially well suited for situations where you want something up and running in a hurry. The big amount of advanced server controls makes it easy to accomplish something very useful in a rush, at the price of the flexibility it gives you to write all the markup manually. Yes, it is true. If you are in a such hurry, you can use it, but I say that don't use it. Because after a certain point, it is impossible to change between applications. It's a too hard thing. Let's say... I decided to convert my uh, web forms application into ASP.NET MVC core. Then I have to do maybe thousands of tests to make sure that application is working correctly. When doing a programming, you cannot prevent program to have bugs, exploits or errors uh, before releasing it. It is almost impossible for a single person to notice all of the bugs and fix them before releasing them. I have fixed it hundreds of bugs, errors, maybe thousand during in the 11 years, all by the logging system that I have developed and from the, the user space feedback. Therefore, converting an application is a huge task and huge waste of time. So choose intelligently before starting your application. Therefore, in this course, I am teaching the latest technology. ASP.NET 5 and VC5 is the latest version. Bootstrap 5 is the latest version. Therefore, we are very up to date. We are going to learn the latest technology. I wish in my school I had learned it that way, but 
We didn't. If you already know how to use web forms, you should definitely give ASP.NET MVC a try, especially if some of the above mentioned problems have been bugging you as well. If you're new to web development and you need to decide between the two technologies, I would still recommend giving ASP.NET MVC a try. The MVC model can seem a bit restrictive to some people, and having to follow a pattern is obviously harder in the beginning than not following one, but once you get used to it, it's very pleasant to work with and judging from the amount of attention that the MVC model receives in general, it's not likely to disappear anytime soon. We have seen what is about MVC and what is about .NET Core. Okay, so we need Visual Studio Community Edition, as I said, it is installed, latest version, latest updates are done. And we will be using .NET Core and ASP.NET Core 5, version 5. This is a very new version. If you have worked with programming languages or frameworks from Microsoft before, you probably already know Visual Studio. It's an IDE integrated development environment perfectly suited for working with .NET technologies like ASP.NET MVC and programming languages like C Sharp and VB.NET. An IDE is an advanced editor, where you can usually edit your code but also manage your projects, compile your code and so on. You can download it from visualstudio.com. There is also macOS version as well. I think there is also a Linux version as well, but I am not sure. You can search for it. Okay, let's start our application. So, we will start with empty. Okay, so you see this tutorial is based on ASP.NET Core version 3.1, which was available previous year. This year, there is newer version, so we will continue with newer one. So we are starting with an empty project here, ASP.NET Core project. Okay, we don't need this HTTPS, no need it. Okay, let's continue. Great. So our project is being composed right now. So you see it is in C Sharp, Linux, MacOS, Windows, Cloud, Service Web. It works almost every platform that you can imagine. Okay, so our project is composed. So you see we have program. CS program class this is almost empty and we have startup class this is also almost empty so in the startup class we have routing we have endpoints which will write to the screen as hello world okay let's continue with the tutorial let's change it as they're writing and then we have settings as json file and we have launch settings so you see they are automatically generated iss express is used so what does this mean that this application will just return this response to the screen when we go to the root of the our isp.net core web application root means that there is no pages just the root url when the application starts you will see so this is the root url of our localhost application you can imagine it as www.google.com and there is no slash so we are seeing the message the response the response is written like as await context response right asynchron hello mvc word so the context is http context response is the response right asynchron is the asynchron so this method gets called by the runtime use this method to configure the http request pipeline so in this configuration we will configure our application start and other things we will see as we progress in our course so right now i am running in debug mode currently any cpu which means that my application is running as 32 bits we can also set it as 64 bit which can increase our speed let's make it i will click nif for okay now my application is 64 bit to be able to use this of course your windows has to be in 64 bit continue to next we are still in the getting start section by the way it is working as expected we will start with composing a controller what was about controller in the last article we created our very first asp.net mvc project it had built-in functionality to display a simple message to the world, but we obviously want more than that. The first thing that would be relevant to add to your new, almost empty MVC model view controller project is a controller. As we talked briefly about earlier, the controller acts as the middleman. It will combine your model with a view and serve the result to the end user. 
however, neither a model nor a view is required, the controller can act on its own for the most basic operations, e.g. delivering a simple text message or redirecting the user to somewhere else. I want to mention another positive feature of MVC model. You see, in big projects, there are groups of developers developing different layers, such as a group of developers develops the background code, a group of developers develops the user interface, another one develops the controllers, so you see a MVC model let you to have different teams totally independently working from each other. If you are using web forms, then it is harder to separate teams as easy as in ASP.NET MVC Core, ASP.NET MVC, because with MVC pattern, you are able to separate development into the very distinct layers. It is much easier to have different teams for each layer. So this is another great advantage of MVC pattern development. However, there are a few things we need to do before adding a new controller to our project adding MVC support to a web project. By default, our application is not supporting MVC pattern. So first we will add the MVC pattern functionality to our project. In the previous article, we created a new web project using an empty template. This leaves us with a very basic web application, so we need to add MVC support to it to let the .NET framework and the web server know how to process incoming requests, etc. Remember the startup.cs file which we modified in the previous article? It's time to open it up again in Visual Studio and look for the configure services method. It's currently empty, but let's change that by adding the following line to it. So here you see we have configure services method which is being called at the startup of the application as from the name you can see. So in ASP.NET Core MVC, startup CS and program CS are extremely important. Their names is extremely important because it is how the application gets started. So we add services at MVC method call to our application so you see services is already coming from our framework so yes we have made it we also need to modify the configure method previously it contains some code to output our hello mvc world message but we want our new controller to handle this task in the future your web application needs to know how to map incoming requests to your controllers and for this it uses the concept of routes we will talk a lot more about routing later on, because it's a slightly complex subject, but for now, we will use a couple of lines of code, found at the bottom of the below code example, to add default routing to the application. So, modify your configure method in the startup.cs file so that it looks like this. It is about how to get pages. How does the engine resolve the URL path into the which page it is. So I will just copy and page. So what is change it? The change it thing is actually only up use endpoints here. Let me copy paste it. So we are removing this up endpoints map get to map default controller root so this is the method call from endpoints and endpoint is from microsoft asp.net core routing i endpoint rotor builder and we call this method if you wonder what this method is doing you see in the description adds endpoints for controller actions to the microsoft asp.net core routing i endpoint rotor builder and adds the default row so the default road is something like this. You see controller home action index and ID. Now we are finally ready to add our first controller. We haven't added a controller yet. We are still at the setup adding a controller. The project structure of an MVC application is up to you. You can place all the controllers, models, views and other files in the root if you want to. However, it's usually a good idea to split things up in relevant folders, e.g. a controllers folder for your controllers, a views folder for your views and so on. Once you get used to a certain structure, whether it's a common one or one you have made up yourself, you will find it a lot easier to navigate your project and work with the files. Also putting these files into the, these named folders makes your job easier because by default .NET framework looks for certain paths under certain folders therefore you should follow this pattern let's add a controllers folder to our project i click the lecture one right click and i click add folder controllers it is done then we will add our first controller add new item 
and we see controller empty so we will name it as home controller by the way this naming is important because by default the asp.net core will look for home controllers if you name it differently it won't work i will show you that you see controllers right click add controller so mvc controller empty edit i will name it as home controllers yes you see it is already named like that okay home controller is added so you see now it has a, a method public method as returning type is i action result and the name is index and it return a view so view is also a method of controller class as you can see it looks like a regular c sharp class it inherits the controller class, which is how the .NET frameworks know that this class is to be treated as an MVC controller. It has one method called index, which will try to return the default view by calling the view method. The .NET framework will be able to find the proper view, if it exists, in one of the many places that it automatically looks for views. However, we have not reached the part of the tutorial where views are introduced, so let's instead change the method to return the, now famous, hello, MVC world, message. Change the single line of the method so that it now looks like this. Okay, so since we didn't add any views to our MVC application yet, we are commenting this out and we are returning a content instead of a view. So let's continue. So now our startup will root to default controller and re default controller will check the home controller. Home controller by default will check the index. So what does that mean? That means that when we open our application, the index action will be called in the default URL okay it is working as expected so this is a working due to default routing and if i change the controller name i think it won't work let's try okay i have to change this as well okay now when we run the application it should throw an error because this is not one of the default controller name okay so you see it can't be found so the default naming is important if you are using default routing now it should work so you see this is under lecture one dot controllers namespace meanwhile let's continue to our project okay so now it is time to compose a view okay if you have read the previous articles you should now have a very basic asp.net mvc project capable of outputting a simple hello world message this text is generated directly in the controller and returned as plain text to the browser but obviously that won't be practical for anything other than the most rudimentary tasks what we want is of course dynamic pages, created with HTML and other web technologies. For that, we need views, which are the visual representation of the model returned by the controller. Okay, this is important, let's repeat it. For that, we need views, which are the visual representation of the model returned by the controller. Since we have already created a controller, called home controller, we're now at the point where we should create a view for it, instead of just returning a piece of text. And as we saw in the previous article, controllers usually live in a folder called controllers, so we should have a folder called views as well. Just right click the project in the solution explorer and select add to new folder, just like we did in the previous article. It's also customary to have one folder per controller, so inside the new views folder, let's create a folder called home to contain the views we have for our home controller. With that in place, we are now ready to create a view inside our new folder. Okay, it is a good practice to follow common patterns that have been developing by the community. Therefore, I will also follow that pattern. So let's add views folder views. For each controller, it's also customary to have one folder per controller inside the views folder. Yes. For each controller, we should have a folder. Therefore, I will also add another folder inside this uh, home. So this will be for home controller. Then inside it, I will add index view. So let's make it. Let's read this first. You will see a dialogue with quite a bit of options. They are all very relevant and we will discuss most of them later in this tutorial. But for now, let's just add a simple view to our project. You can do that by replicating the options I have used from this screenshot. Okay, so let's add our index view, which will be our index. I will pick rather view empty. When I click add, so it is adding index CSHTML true. Razor view. Yes, we are adding Razor view, not a Razor page. It's important. Let's edit. Okay, looks like the other options are removed in the uh, version 5. 
Therefore, we didn't get these options. We have, I think, more emptier page should be same index.cshtml. Let's copy and paste this into our view. So we have layout set as null and we have some HTML code. This is HTML code, if you know. The document type HTML, HTML head. Head is the part where we put metadata about our page. It is not directly displayed to the user. And in the body tag, we will write our code. That's basically just some standard HTML for a blank document with only a little bit MVC related code in the top based on the razor syntax, which we'll get to in one of the upcoming chapters. For now, just ignore it and work with the HTML, which you hopefully already know and understand. At this point, let's make a small modification to the HTML to display a greeting to the world. It should of course go between the tags, like this. Okay, this is a simple HTML code. You see there is spawn. Inside spawn, we are setting the font size to 18 pixel. We are writing hello, but the MVC will be bold world. Anything else? Okay, now we will return view inside our home controller here so i will comment this i will return this okay so now it will return this index chstml but how does it know to return index because since this is home controller it will check first views folder by default then it will check home folder by default then inside it it will look index chstml because we are in the index action result as you can see here so it will match this and this and home and home here and views folder these are all default paths and naming now let's run it and see whether it is working or not now we are able to as you can see format our turned data to the user with html this is the razor page therefore it is cs html okay now you see the page is titled as index when we inspect we can see it inside the head tag you see meta name viewport content with h with and title is index and inside the body our spawn is printed like this this is working as expected if i change it to this and refresh it won't work because it require me to restart the application however there is a solution for that we will see that as well it requires me to restart the application for the changes to reflect okay let's just continue then we will get that part so how does it work thanks to the default routing mechanisms found in the asp.net mvc framework the root url is automatically routed to the home controller's index method don't worry about routes just yet we will talk about them soon with a call to the view method, a number of locations are searched to find a view with a matching name. In this case, project root views name of controller index CSHTML. This view is then interpreted as it may very well contain razor code and then returned as output to the browser. So as I explain it, this is about default routing mechanism implemented to the .NET Core MVC. Therefore, since we have followed the naming pattern, it is able to find the default pages However, you can also give them custom names, it's possible of course, but for now we will continue with this. We have now successfully combined a controller and a view to generate an actual web page. It might still seem like voodoo or black magic, but just move on in this tutorial and get a feeling of how it works and how powerful the framework is, before trying to fully grasp all the concepts. There's a lot more you need to know about views though, to take full advantage of asp.net MVC, this was just an introduction, to get you up and running. In an upcoming chapter, we'll dig much deeper into the subject of views. Okay, we are still in getting started section, so let's move to the next article. Okay, creating a model. Okay, so time to compose a model. In the last two articles, we started out by creating a controller and then a view. We combine the two to create a simple HTML based web page. However, at this point, our view might as well have been a flat HTML file because it didn't do anything other than output basic HTML. The idea behind MVC model view controller is of course to mix HTML with data generated by the server and this where the model comes into play. In the MVC architecture, the model is generated by the controller and then passed to the view, which outputs the relevant data to the user. As you saw in the previous article, we can do without the model if we don't have any server-generated data for the specific page, but as soon as we do, we'll use a model. If you are not going to use any uh, server-generated data, 
then it is best to use static HTML, not having heavier and complexer programming language. So therefore, in the today's applications, almost in all cases, you will need a server generated data, therefore a model. But what does a model look like? Well, that's actually up to you, because a model can be any kind of object found in the framework. It could in fact be a simple number or string, or it could be a complex object instantiated from a class, e.g. a user class which holds information about a user, a guestbook entry item which contains a post to a guestbook or anything else. That also means that your model can be a class you already have, e.g. something that comes from the database, or a class that you create specifically to become a model for one or several views. Add a model. Let's add a model to our Hello MVC World project created in the previous article on controllers. For the sake of this example, we will be creating a new model instead of relying something already defined in the project. Just like we usually keep controllers in a folder called controllers and views in a folder called views, we will add a folder called models to the root of our project. So, right click the project name in the solution explorer and select add to new folder, just like we did in the previous articles. When you have added the models folder, it's time to create the actual model. As mentioned, models are just regular classes, so that's what we'll be adding. Let's compose our directory with add new folder models. Inside that model, we will add a model named as movie. Okay, so our example will be movie. So you see we are giving a custom name to our model. It doesn't have to be a standard name. So I will just add class, name it as movie. Okay, movie CS is added. You see it is public class movie. Since we will use this class to contain basic information about a movie, in the dialog that pops up simply enter movie.cs as the name of the new class. Visual Studio will create a new, empty class for you, which should look like this. Okay, so you see here, hello MVC world.models is their namespace. This is the namespace that is defined when you compose your project. Our namespace is lecture one, as you can see. We will add two public properties, string title and daytime release date. These are properties, not fields. If you wonder what are the difference between fields and properties, you can watch my advanced programming course lectures. Now our model class is ready. As we talked about, the model should be instantiated by the controller, so let's head over to the home controller we created in a previous article. It previously just returned a view from the index method, like this. Okay, so this is what we have currently, and now we will modify it into this. So let's go to our home controller. I will comment this and paste this one. So what this is going to do is, so you see under models namespace, I will compose an instance of movie here. I make definition here and I initialize it here with new keyword. This is regular C sharp syntax, nothing different. I set the title, I set the release date and I return again view, but inside that view I return an object. You can only return single model to your view. Therefore, if you want to return multiple classes, then you need to expand your movie class into a parent of multiple classes and then you would be returning multiple classes in a one return so you cannot write here a chain of different objects or such we can only have empty you see i am currently showing the method overloads of view method uh, it can return object model currently what we are doing it can return a string view name name of the view by default, it will be index view because it is under index method. And then it can return the model and index view name. It will return movie right now. And there are object model, but we are not done yet. Let's continue. We did two changes. We instantiated a new movie object with one of most critically acclaimed movies in the world. And then we passed this object to the view method. This will make sure that our model is available in our view. Remember the view we created in the previous article, called index, CSHTML? Time to open it up again and have a look. Okay, this is an important sentence. Let's read it again. His will make sure that our model is available in our view. So two 
access our model in our view we have to return it we have to first initialize it and then we have to return it because this is an instance based class as previously mentioned a view can work without a model just fine but when we want to actually use a model we need to make the view aware of this and tell it which type we expect the model to be this is done with the razor at model directive usually in the top of the view file like this our razor page cannot just know what will it get therefore we define our model like this with model keyword here this is a special keyword it starts with add character then you see currently it is giving me an error because my namespace is different it is lecture one inside lecture one namespace under models class or folder rather than not class but folder i link it to the movie class so this is the model of this razor page right now you cannot define two models three models or more models but you can define one or no models i mean you cannot define more than one model inside single razor page we have to define this because it is a runtime thing when it returns at the runtime it is the way it knows the model. Now our view knows that it should expect a model of the type movie, which gives you at least two advantages. If a wrong type of model is accidentally passed to the view, an error will be raised and also, Visual Studio will be able to help you with IntelliSense when you use the model in the view. So let's do that. Okay, so this is a really important part. Now that we have defined it, IntelliSense will help us to use it. So in the title, I will use the title property of the model with model.title. So now you see I am able to access model object inside this view with at model keyword. It's public parameters, public properties or fields with that way. So you see how clean code it is. It is extremely clean, well structured, easy to understand and easy to write. This is combination of server side coding and HTML coding right now what we are doing and with an extremely clean and structured way. Writing a clean code and easy to understand code is extremely important part of being a good software engineer. And then we will change printed message like this. The movie model.title, I am able to use it as I want, was released at model.release date to long date string. This is a method extension of date time. So let's run the application and see what it prints on the screen. And meanwhile it's running, let's read it. Notice how I reference the keyword model several times in the markup now. This gives me direct access to the model we passed into the view, in this case the instance of the movie class. That means that I can use properties from it, e.g. the title and the release date properties. Time to test our work. Press F5 to run the project and hopefully you should be met with the information about the Godfather. Okay, this is also important. You may also have noticed that I prefix the model keyword with the at, at character, e.g. at model.title. This is all part of the razor syntax, which we'll talk much more about in an upcoming chapter. Now our title is the Godfather and the printed message is the, the Godfather was released Friday, March 14, 72. So this is the long date in my system culture, which is english us so i can also format this as i want such as let's see let me show the span style equal to font size 25 pixel color is something and then i will end the span here by the way you should not do this inline styling it is not the preferred way but just for right now i am showing we will use proper css other formatting let's just use this way first then i will show you the way of css formatting okay now it is styled as i want okay let's continue to our tutorial so we have passed the chapter introduction the chapter getting started now we are in the razor chapter okay this is what we have seen so far continue with introduction to razor pages so we are under the razor category chapter we start with introduction when Microsoft first created the ASP.NET MVC framework, it used Web Forms pages to display content. However, Web Forms wasn't as flexible as people were used to from other MVC frameworks, it had too much overhead in the form of view state, server controls etc. Therefore, Microsoft decided to implement a much simpler and more lightweight language, View Engine for the MVC framework. 
they called it Razer and it was released in January 2011 as a part of ASP.NET MVC version 3. So you see how late the Razer's engine were implemented in MVC framework. It is done in 2011 with the version 3. Now we are in the version 5. Razer allows you to write in various dialects based on your favorite .NET language. In this tutorial, we will be focusing on the C Sharp version of Razer, but you can use Razer with VB.NET as well. All right, why use Razer? Why use Razer? The biggest advantage of the Razer is the fact that you can mix client side markup HTML with server side code, e.g., C Sharp or VB.NET, without having to explicitly jump in and out of the two syntax types. For instance, consider this example of a page in ASP.NET Web Forms. Okay, so this is what I was talking. You can mix client side markup with a very awesome clearness. So, this is an example from ASP.NET Web Forms. You had to use these markup tags each time you were using server side object, server side feature. It was really confusing. I will compose a Web Form project to show you how messy it was we won't be using this project but i just want to illustrate you okay it is called as asv.net web application this is web forms next okay you see i am able to pick .NET framework version it is latest is .NET framework version 4.8 i am not sure they may have ended the development so web forms don't need https okay so this won't be an empty project therefore i will be able to show you the difference okay meanwhile let's continue so this was the sign text of web forms we had to use these opening tags and closing tags wherever we want to access server side controls and it was really making it messy okay here there are some pages let's see whether they have used it or not you see at the top you had to use some definitions like this okay there isn't any okay here for example for the accessing title parameter from the page that title you had to open it and close it like this everywhere everywhere you are using so i can cut this and paste it here it would work like this in the razor we just write it like this so i will put a new line here you see i'm able to access name object name model yeah name model and the current date like this however we don't have a name definition right now maybe we can define it in the code somewhere yeah it is defined like this so you see currently we don't have something as name i will open a server tag here like this i will define a string as name equal to now it should become available yes now it's available as you can see it is so clean and easy to understand you see the difference now i can run the application so this is the difference let's continue now obviously this basic example doesn't save you a ton of keystrokes but in the long run this makes it a lot easier and much faster to build your pages and combine markup with code this becomes more obvious when you want to do something slightly more advanced, like making a conditional statement in your view. Okay, yes, it's so true. On the conditional statements, it is much harder. For example, you see, I open it, I close it, the if, then I type it, I open, I close again, then I open and I close again. It becomes much more messier as you write more complex code. I know from my web-based game development. However, in Razor, it is much cleaner and easier like this so you see inside the server tag opening we are still able to write html code with html markup currently it tells me that i don't have request in my razor view and then request.query okay so let's run it however i wonder if this will throw an exception or not since we are not providing query as test query parameter so you see some examples this tutorial might be outdated or whatever the tutorial you find on the internet therefore you may be needed to spend some time to find the correct syntax this may have a built-in null check yeah this has a built-in null check therefore rather than not equal to i have to check as length bigger than zero so this should be a better this if will not be parsed by default right now because the length should be zero i think this has a built-in null handling it doesn't show the errors okay so you see it didn't enter inside this if because the length is zero 
However, I can now add test equal to let's write out some tests. Okay, now we can see it. You see, last of markup here, test value is awesome test, and even more here. When I change it to something else, it won't work. So you see how clear the code is i can also say that from my experience dotnet core is better handling at null values makes your job even easier than regular dotnet framework so basic razor syntax let's read it in this chapter we will look at all the basic principles of the razor syntax the most basic thing you can do with the razor syntax is to access something from the server side by prefixing a variable or function name with an at at character we saw a couple of examples of this in the previous chapter, where we can simply mix HTML, text and server-side variables all together like this. Yes, we have seen it. The above expression outputs text, mixed with the name variable, has to be declared elsewhere, and then it access the current date from the now property of the datetime struct, and thanks to the simple syntax, the code is actually quite easy to read. This is true, by the way, we are able to access datetime because it's a struct, therefore you don't have to define it anywhere, it is a framework feature. However, for name parameter, I have to define it elsewhere, which I do in the code here. But the at prefix is not just for accessing simple variables or properties on a class. It's used for pretty much anything in Razor, including inline control statements, code blocks, comments, and much more, as you will see in the following examples. So the key character of Razor pages is at. It was this one in the web form, lesser than and percent and greater than and percent and greater than. HTML encoding, this is important, really important. You should be aware that the when you use the implicit Razor expression syntax shown above, the output will be automatically HTML encoded. This is usually the behavior you want, but in some cases, you want to be able to output HTML and have it interpreted by the browser instead of rendered as output. For this, you can use the raw method on the HTML class and here's an example where you can see the difference. Okay, so this is a good thing to show. If you don't encode your output, that would make your application vulnerable to XSS attacks. Uh, XSS attacks, cross-site scripting attacks is very dangerous. Therefore, the encoding is important. If you are displaying a client input on another client screen, you should encode it properly or you have to be sure that it is sanitized. Sanitizing is not the best protection or it must be a controlled input. So here the hello world, as you can see, it has HTML tags. It could have script tags as well. The first one will print it as like this exactly. And the second one will show it as a bolt and will not show the HTML tags. Let me run the application. I will show also the script version as well. So the first one is encoded, therefore it is written as a text. No matter what the, let's say, hacker puts inside that message, it will be printed as a text. So let me show what I mean. I am adding a script like this. This could be a malicious script as well, which would hack your computer alert you are hacker so you will see the difference in the first case it will be printed as raw text will be printed as a string however the html raw will print it as exactly as it is an html code and we will see the alert message when the page is rendered you see you are hacked and the other one is scripted as a string. So this is what is about HTML raw by default encoding. Explicit expressions. In the first example above, we used a so-called implicit expression, but some situations calls for a more explicit variant to show the parser exactly what your intentions are. Razor comes with an explicit expression syntax for just those situations and basically it's all about wrapping your expression with a set of parentheses. This makes it easier for the parser to understand what you're doing and allows for stuff like calculations and modifications inside of a razor expression. Here's an example. Okay, so we have a name parameter. We already have it here. I won't uh, define it again. So name, substring, first from beginning zero index and four characters. Then it will print your age and like this. This was impossible in web forms writing code like this. You had to use all opening, closing, server-side parsing. 
Notice the syntax, where the at character is followed by a set of surrounding parentheses. We use it two times, first to access the substring method on the string variable, and then to do a piece of very simple math directly inside the razor expression. The resulting output looks like this. Hello, John. Your age is 42. Okay, so in this case, I will just get six characters. My first name, I will type my root age is K. Okay. Okay, so my age is displayed, my name is displayed as well. I can write anything inside this parentheses and it will understand that expression. Multi-statement razor blocks. If you need to do more than simply accessing e.g. a variable, razor allows you to enter a dedicated, multi-line code block by entering a start curly bracket after the at operator. Here's an example. This is also another great feature of Razor pages, Razor syntax. So you see inside here, I am defining whatever I want and then I can access it like this simply. So we make some math operation, we define some string and then we compose some string like this. Then I can write encoded text variable like this. So let's run the application to see. By the way, when you are watching this lecture, Please just don't copy paste my code. Write it yourself because with writing yourself, you will understand it much better. Text tell the word, the result is 42. Then we didn't put any new line. Therefore, it is written like this. Hello word, the result is 42. Hello word, the result is 2. Okay. I could also write something like this. Let me show you. So here, I would make like this. The result is sum plus i and not n. N is not a valid HTML, let's say, new line. You have to type it like this. However, this won't be printed as a new line because we are using encoded. Let's show you what I mean. Currently, it will be printed as encoded. Therefore, we will see it as a BR tag, break tag. Okay, it is like this because it is encoded. Then I will convert it to HTML raw this and now you will see the difference okay now it is printed as i wanted with new lines increasing each time with one and such i could write anything i want let's continue notice how i can write regular c-sharp code inside the code block including loops conditional statements and everything else that you're used to from the c-sharp language one important difference though is that you have to have curly braces around your control statements inside of code blocks, even if they only span one line, otherwise you will confuse the parser. Also notice how I can define a variable inside the code block, modify it if needed, and then use it outside of the code block. This is multi-statement razor blocks. Now, this is another great feature. HTML tags and plain text inside code blocks. There were no such feature in web forms. This is the razor feature. So, when you're inside a code block, like shown in the example above, you may still need to output text. In fact, that's quite normal. But instead of forcing you in and out of code blocks, razor allows you to mix in HTML tags directly in your code blocks, like this. This is an awesome feature. Test it. So you see, I am inside a code block. However, I am able to write the noun HTML tags as well, such as P or it could be a div as well. So you see it's automatically different colored. It says that it is assigned but never use it. I can simply use it like this as well. And let me show you like here. So this will be printed and this is defined here and this is a markup having text. It is awesome. Believe me, it is awesome. It is much cleaner and easier code. A razor syntax is much better than the traditional ASP.NET platform syntax. Razor simply sees your HTML tags and then assumes that you're now giving it markup for output instead of code for processing. But what if you don't want to wrap your text inside of tags? Razor has an option for doing this as well, using the at operator. So you see, it is printed. This is a tag with plain text and markup inside it. The code is working. And then we can use this as well. What does this mean is this is plain text. Okay, this is plain text inside code block because you cannot write a plain text inside code block. This is invalid because it is expecting variable. When I run it, I will get an error. You will see. So let's comment it out. So how can I write? I can write a plain text like this. This is the single line plain text. And then I can also write multi-line plain text like this with covering it text block. You see multiple lines. This will break it because it is just only covering single line. 
So you see, if I am going to comment inside this part, I have to use this. Otherwise, all right. When we run it, we will see it. By the way, if you do multiple lines like this, I think it won't parse it as multiple line, but let's check it as well. Probably we need to put VR tag, new line tag. Yeah, it is still single line. Prevent it. You can put VR tag like this. It would work, I think. You see, it is automatically understanding that you are using an HTML tag inside text and parses it that way. This is awesome. See it? Yes, now it's multi line. Razor server side comments. Sometimes you may want to leave comments in your code or comment out lines of code temporarily to test things. Therefore, most programming languages include a syntax for commenting your code and so does Razor. You could just use HTML comments, but as we all know, these are rendered to the browser and can therefore be seen if the view source option is used. Razor comments on the other hand are never rendered to the browser but simply ignored when the page is parsed. Here's an example on how you can have a Razor comment in your views. I think this is also not shown. Check it from the source. Yes, this is also rendered server side comment. So it is not parsed in the browser. So this is also another server side comment. Inside Razor, you can use regular comment as well. Like this. Oh, we are still inside of a server tag. So you see, it is an invalid way of comment right now because we are not inside a server tag. Therefore, I will comment it out. This. Okay. I think for today it is enough. Please do everything I did with the same order. Meanwhile, watching, you can pause it. If you have any questions, best way is contacting me through our Discord channels. I think this is enough for today. End of lecture. Hopefully, see you next week. Feel free to ask me any questions.